made a very interesting point in the book uh, about, <clears throat> about comparing uh, his position on the UN in the 64 race yeah. and then actually taking the position. There are three examples where your dad, and the reason I call the book Destiny and Power, plug alert, is that okay? Um, <laughs> where I believe that, and you and I have talked about this, from very early on, George H.W. Bush was the star of the family. That's your Aunt Nancy's line. Um, when he was shot down on September 2nd, 1944, and rescued after four hours in that life raft, remember if the wind and the tide had been going toward Chichijima as opposed to away from it, Chichijima was a scene of terrible Japanese war crimes, uh, including cannibalism, which led your dad to sometimes say to your, your, your mother, you know, I was almost an hors d'oeuvre. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if the wind had been going another way, he might have eaten, you know, and hell, he might have been an entree. I mean, he was a tall guy, <laughs> you know. He's 6'2". Uh, so at that point, your Aunt Nancy said, he was meant to be saved. Um, your father introduced him to the French ambassador in Washington in the 1950s, saying, this is my son George. He's going to be president of the United States one day. Grandfather. Grandfather, sorry, grandfather, uh, Senator Bush. Um, and in 1965, when he's lost the 64 race, but the 7th District of Houston is coming into, into being, he has a fellow named Ross Baker who is thinking about challenging him in the primary. No relation to Jim. No relation to Jim. Uh, <laughs> or Ross per Right. <laughs> yeah, no, none of that. Um, he goes to him, and, and Baker says to him, well, I want to be a congressman. I think you're just using this as a stepping stone to the Senate. And George H.W. Bush says, no, no, I'm not using this as a stepping stone to the Senate. I want to be president. <laughs> this is 1965. He is 41 years old. He has yet to win a race except to be the Harris County chairman. But he had a sense of destiny, a word he doesn't particularly like, but it was a sense that he was meant to do great things. And what was so striking to me as a biographer is finding all these examples. Your other grandfather, Marvin Pierce, wrote a letter when he was at Yale to a friend who said, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this son-in-law becomes president. So people were talking about his possi the possibility of a pathway to the presidency as a possibility long before it became probable which was a real revelation to me, and which led me to see, sort of begin to see his career in a slightly different light. If you believe you're the best man for the job, and your dad unquestionably always believed that, then what you say and what you do on the campaign trail, and he told me once sitting out on the porch at y'all's house in Maine, politics is not a pure undertaking. You have to say and do certain things that you might ingest badly uh, to get to where you wanna be test becomes, that's just business of politics. That's been true since the Athenians. What is important is what do you do once you have that power? And one of the examples is, as the president says, in 1964, George H.W. Bush was not exactly the biggest fan as a Goldwater Republican of the United Nations. But he gets that job, he gets that power, and he works like a dog to make the UN matter as much as it can for foreign policy and to help his president, which was, which was his duty uh, at that time. And there are ex there's example after example of where he would uh, win power and always at that point put the country ahead of his own political interest. And that is a rare political story. Uh, when you write the book on me, you're not gonna find anybody predicting I would be president. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll have to find another angle. Yeah. <laughs>